colour event. My name is Fiona, I'm the Torbins Colour Specialist and we are here this evening to talk all things colour. So for those of you that are joining us for the very first time, I'll quickly run through how our sessions work um, just before we start. So I will be on screen for the next half an hour um, streaming and as we stream, please use this as an opportunity to upload any questions that you do have um, in regards to colour, etc. Um, also, you can certainly upload questions about projects that you're embarking on or certainly ask any questions about our wonderful portfolio of products that we have available to help you protect and beautify your space. So if you do have some um, images that you'd like to upload and you're wanting me to help you with them, please hold off until I finish streaming. Um, you certainly can't upload any images while I am on um, on screen so to speak it's very hard to do so so once the half an hour finishes um, upload your images and um, I may be finished on screen but I'll be sitting behind the computer to answer any further questions that do come along so before we begin tonight and tonight's session is all about frequently asked questions I just want to recap on last week so last week we went through um, quite a few different colour scenarios but one thing that we did do was we used Colorsmith to create a fantastic, well I think it's a fantastic, um, colour palette from some tiles and so I did it, um, uh, sort of uploaded some images, some digital images but tonight I've actually got a photo that I have um, where I've put all of the images together or all of the elements should I say, tiles and then you can see the um, lids of some paint tins if you like with the colour so just to show you how fantastic Colorsmith is and how fantastic the colour match is so I'm going to take you to my um, iPad so I'll just pop myself up into the screen yep you can see me there so last week this was the tile that I used to create colours from and so I scanned the green with the Colorsmith reader and then I scanned the white and I created the two beautiful colours. But then I leveraged the functionality of the Colorsmith app and down below you can see a beautiful dusty pink. So I'll take you to the next image. Just, this was just to show you how you can use the colours. So our 60, 30, 10 principle if you like. So 60% being the main colour, 30% your secondary colour and then 10% an accent colour. So that is a certainly a... Um, proven way of creating a beautiful well-balanced um, scheme and then here we go here's a little bit of a um, I like to call them everybody would know these so they're called a flat lay so here's an image with some beautiful elements that would go into this space and then down on the side there up the top you can see the color smith reader that I used and then you can see the colors and the actual lids of um, paint pots so it's actual paint in there so you've got the beautiful green followed by the white and then the pink so that just shows you how fantastic Colorsmith is and you know using it in a, in a real life scenario here showing you that it really can be and is a, um, a wonderful tool and certainly something that professionals can use as well so I'll come back to the screen now excellent I'm not up in the screen anymore so tonight as I said is all about frequently asked questions so I want to start with something that I have been um, discussing with consumers and customers quite a lot regularly and it's something around printed colour versus paint deposited colour. And so you know a lot of people and I'll be honest they'll bring in a magazine and they'll say look I want that colour and the magazine may say for example um, it might be a beautiful green or something along the lines of that and then when they get their colour pot, take it home, it doesn't quite look like the colour that was in the magazine. So I guess I want to um, bring to life the understanding of the different mediums that we view colour with and how it can change. So when you're looking at colour um, that is printed um, and particularly um, in magazines etc, the beautiful glossy magazines and they show an image of a room and they'll say this is that colour when you actually see the colour um, printed versus actual paint it can vary and it can vary um, quite a lot in some instances and it can be due to the fact that different printers ink create um, different magazine images etc um, you've got different sheen levels so there's different factors so the way to avoid disappointment when you're shopping for colour is to understand um, the way we view colour and to understand the different mediums so you know you'll be looking at a um, computer screen and you're looking at color and that will certainly depending on 
um, the pixelation in your screen, your RGBs, etc. So your red, green, blue used to create the colors um, digitally can certainly uh, make your color look different to what you see again that has been um, your, your paint color, paint deposited perhaps on a paint chip. So these are the things that I'm trying to bring um, or make everybody aware. So I thought this was a really good topic to bring up tonight. And so the one way to avoid this is that if you do find, um, you know, you've fallen in love with one of the beautiful designer magazines and there's been a color displayed and it's adorning a wall in an image there, get yourself a sample pot first because the sample pot's going to show you the real true color. And so get a sample pot and I say this every week and I think it's a really important um, tip. Get yourself a large piece of cardboard. So you want a piece of cardboard that's going to be at least a metre by a metre square. And you know, um, if you hop into your local bunning store, the palette liners that sit between the layers of paint that turn up are a perfect piece of cardboard to use. And I'm sure they'd be more than happy to help you with that. So, and then I would get your sample pot, brush out three coats of the colour onto the card itself. And then once dry, move that around the room. And especially if it's inside around the room, paying particular attention. So there's two areas where you're going to really see how the color will play within its environment. And that is up near the ceiling and then also down near the floor. So up near the ceiling is going to allow you to see what your natural light versus your artificial light. So your lighting of an evening, how it will change the color. And then down in the, near the floor is going to um, allow you to see, for example, if you have wooden floorboards or you have um, a carpet that has quite a deep tone, etc., you may find that the carpet or the floor is going to influence the color, your white, so to speak. So, or, and color, not just white. So certainly trial your sample pot or your color in those two areas. And again, if we're looking at using an exterior color, um, I thoroughly or highly recommend trialing the color within its environment outside because there are so many factors when we start talking about using color outside and one of them is i find from my experience when we're talking about whites in particular whites do have a tendency if they do not have enough um, depth in them if you like and the depth being tint i'm not saying that you have to have a a, um, a white that's got so much tint that it loses the look of being white but you need to have a little bit of substance in it so that when you've got sun beating down on the exterior and you know the because white has um very good reflecting values if you like the last thing you want to do is at seven o'clock in the morning when you're sitting down having your morning cup of tea is having to put your sunglasses on before you've even started your day because of the sun that's reflecting off the white on the exterior of your home it's too much so certainly trial uh, via a sample pot that is the most crucial point that i can um, make when we're talking about color and when we're talking about color um, in an exterior application so there's a little tip for you and the other thing and this is something and I'm going to show you what you can do with Colorsmith in a moment is and I have done this for many customers inside um, in stores is they will bring an image um, from a magazine or a digital image that they love and they're wanting to replicate the color that exists within the image and so it's a very simple process of downloading the um, Colorsmith by Taubman's app and then you can upload a photo and you can create a color. Very, very simple. So I'm going to show you how we can do that. And I do happen to have the latest, it's actually the latest um, Bunnings magazine. And on the back, you'll see Taubman's and you'll see Taubman's All Weather. So I'm going to use this image as a way to show you what you can do with color. So what I'm going to do is we are going to swap screens and hope that it all goes well. Okay, I'll take you to my iPad. Beautiful. So on the screen now you can see there are a couple of QR codes. And so if you'd like to follow what I'm doing, I suggest I'll just give you a moment. Um, suggest that you hover your camera on your iPhone or on your Android um, over either one of these uh, QR codes and that will take you to the platform where you can download the app. It is that simple. So I'll just give you a moment. Okay, there's a question. I'll quickly answer the question, just give you a little bit longer. Um, 
Hi, Wendy. Thank you very much for joining our session. Sorry, I'm just reading here. So you're saying, hi there, just wondering if I could still get magnetic paint. I know that it used to be sold. Oh, Wendy, I'd love to help you with that, but we no longer, as far as I believe, have magnetic paint. Um, I'll certainly pop it out to our team to see whether it's available within our um, company-owned stores, but I do believe that we no longer have it, but I will certainly come back to you. Thank you. Okay, so I've given everybody a moment to have a quick look or to download um, a QR code. And now you'll see in the top of the screen there, you'll see the actual app itself called Colorsmith. So I'm going to tap on that. Aha, uh -huh, and it brings me up to a screen that looks like this. So what I'm going to do is quickly show you as I was talking about um, printed color, et cetera, et cetera, um, and people wanting to create or have a color that they see in an image. This is a way where you can create a color from an image. So what we're going to do is here, we're going to go to create from match. And then here where it says photo library, we'll tap on the photo library. And I do have the image. There's something that I prepared earlier. Now with the eye, I'm going to move it across the image. But if you look at the band that's directly down, so you'll see Colorsmith and then you'll see tap to create color. And then you'll see a big brown band. Let me move the eye and watch the band change color. So there we go, I've got a beautiful, I'm picking out the soft um, bluey gray that exists within the sky there. If I go down to our logo here on the can, there's beautiful blue. You can scroll across to the yellow and then obviously to the, from red to, uh, sorry, from orange to red here. So the beauty of this is you can pinpoint where you want to bring a color to life. So it is that simple and you know what, in this instance, I really love this red that's on screen. So I'm going to hit select. So the next thing that we do is where it says save my color, we hit save my color. And then you can name your color. So I am going to name this. Ah, let's call it rocking red because I think it's a pretty neat red. And then save color. So it has now created a color. I've named it. And now if I'm going to go into store, the next thing that I can do is where it says order in store, it populates a QR code. I can take that down to um, my local hardware store. And basically from this QR code, they scan it and then create the paint. It is that easy. And where it says share there, you can actually share the QR code across all of your social media platforms. You can text it to your painter, you can text it to your friends, airdrop, email, it's endless. That is how easy it is to create color from an image. So I also want to, while I'm on this bandwagon here, is I want to take you back to the main menu. So I'm going to hit home and I want to take you because the next question, and then I'll start answering the questions that are coming through my feed. The next question, and I get asked this pretty much every week. We have a lot of conversations around whites and we have a lot of conversations around greys. And I talk very much around greys being that we have um, greys that, so I'm going, to, I'm going to go across to the collections and hit neutrals. We have greys and you can see them here. This is a perfect example Greys that are either a blue based gray or a red or purple based gray, a green based gray or a grayish and grayish being a mix of um, gray and brown if you like. And so I talk about this all the time and we talk about the different grays and how they can vary, etc. And one thing that I always say is if you are beginning a journey with gray, if you look at a gray that has a green base, because it's what I would describe as being a neutral based gray, you'll find it is very easy to work with and it is very easy to, um, you know, create your space with and add other elements in and other colors because using a neutral style gray um, is very forgiving. Let's put it that way. So I direct everybody that is starting their journey uh, with greys to start with it with a neutral base gray because I know that there are so many wonderful uh, cut or toned greys or coloured greys that sit within the realms of being neutral and you can generally find something for everybody. Um, obviously, depending on if we were talking about um, bringing 
grays to life outside. I would certainly take into account um, roof colors and other elements that exist within the space. But this is a really great place to start. So it's the Color Smith collections and I'm actually shopping at the moment the neutrals. And so you can really see this really explains. So, you know, I've got my, the three below bottom ones, if you like, would be what I would call a blue based gray. The next three would be going into more of a, uh, a red. And you can certainly see when you go up um, the next three going up to the lighter, you can see, I can certainly see here that does have a slight purpley undertone. And then the next three are more of that neutral green gray and then the next three are more of a gray so more of a beige gray so that really explains and gives you a visual um, of how grays can be categorized and so if you're shopping for a gray i would start where am i i would start around about here ah i've obviously here we go I'm wondering whether I have actually used this before. I think I may have done. I may have um, saved it prior. So, but this is the gray that I would sort of start with. I think it's a beautiful soft gray. And then with this, you've got the ability to lessen the intensity, heighten the intensity. So I could dial down my gray and go to something like that, which is a beautiful soft gray again. And then if you're not quite, you know, in love with the color and you're thinking I'd like it to be a little bit more of this or a little bit lighter etc what you can do is well, you can see on the screen there just below where it says save my color you've got intensity and then you have similar so I can tap on similar and I can scroll along here and it's bringing up similar tones so I could even I actually quite like the fourth one along which is very similar to what is on screen but it's a little lighter so I could bring that to life so there's lots of ways that we can play with color using the ColorSmith app. And then the other thing, you've got um, combinations. Combinations brings up a world of color. So an entire color palette that is designed to go with the color that you have created. So I'm going to tap on that. There are some beautiful tones there. So for example, the first three tones, inclusive of the larger color that you're seeing on your screen there, you, know, you could really um, embrace the Hamptons coastal feel. Um, that would work extremely well. So you've got an entire palette straight here at your fingertips. Now the other thing that I will show you, so I'm going to go back to the home screen. So I showed you the neutrals, now I'll show you whites. Again, there is a um, beautiful collection of whites there. And you know, depending on whether you are looking for a white for your interior, and an interior that receives a lot of natural sunlight, I would direct you towards a cooler white. So what have we got there? I think looking at the screen here, you can see a white, uh, one, two, three, four, five. It is the, um, going from the bottom up, it is number six there, just under a color that has more of a pink hue. There is quite a cool white there, which would be fantastic for an area that receives or is drenched in natural sunlight. And then for an area that um, lacks light and you're looking for something that's going to warm up your space, I would look for something that is warm because that's going to certainly not look drab within your space because if you're using a cool toned white within an area that doesn't get a lot of light, that's what you risk. It can look dull and look drab. So you'd look shopping for whites again. I'd look along here and go, okay, I don't have a lot of natural light. Where can I start? And if I move it up there just below where the ColorSmith banner is, you'll see a white that has a lot of warmth to, to it. And I know that using something like that within a space that lacks light is going to work really well. So if you are deliberating over white and you're not sure where to begin, visit the ColorSmith app. It has a world of color at your fingertips. You can sit at home, you can scroll through, you can manipulate colors, you can dial up the intensity, lessen the intensity. And as I showed you a moment ago, you can certainly create an entire color palette. It's fabulous. Okay, I will come back on screen. Fantastic, so what do we have here? Okay. Hi, Keisha, thank you very much for joining us. Keisha, I'll just read out your question. Hi, Fiona, could you help me with color selections for the external of the house? Roof and downpipes are woodland gray, windows are June, the areas we aren't able to change. Oh, sorry, these areas we aren't able to change. 
Uh, we we have looked at shale grey, but I am loving smoky green, either half or quarter strength. Are you able to suggest colours to go with the colour bond June and woodland grey? I certainly can. So let me just have a look here. Let's see what I can find. And then once I find some suitable colours, I am happy to bring something up on screen. So that you can see what I'm doing here. Where are we? Right, okay, so we've got, let's go again, Woodland Grey, I've got June, and let me take you, maybe I don't have Woodland Grey there, we'll go again. That's what happen when, happens when you're live, things don't always go to plan. Okay, now we're on to something. I've got Woodland Grey here, and I have June. Okay, I'll hold these two colours up for everybody to see. Okay, so you're wanting something that's going to work well with that. Okay. I do agree. A sort of greeny tone or something along the lines to um, accommodate the woodland grey is probably going to work really, really well. So, just... Right, here we go. So there are some beautiful tones here that have a slight green undertone, maybe not. Okay, there is a colour here called Torman's Beige Ash that actually sits quite nicely with the June and also with Woodland Grey. So I'm going to get that up on the screen. So if you are shopping for colour and again, not sure where to start, if you visit www.torbmans.com.au, we have it sorted for you. So I'm going to take you to my um, laptop now and I'll pop myself up in the corner. That's worked, fantastic. So this is a one-stop shop. It has everything you need, um, certainly around colour and certainly around all of the beautiful products that are going to help you achieve um, the end result that you're looking for. So what's so fantastic about it is that we have all of the colours grouped. So I'm going to select paint colours and I'm going to scroll down and you can see here a family of colours right on the screen here. So everything's grouped very very easy to shop the other thing as well let's hope that I'm on the right spot if you okay um, if you come here and you're selecting a color and you're looking and using the search function and you cannot find the color there is another way to do it so if you do what I just did there which was I selected colors and if you go right down to the bottom so you scroll down and you go to where it says order color swatches this is where I'm going to take you now. And the reason I'll take you there is because it's a fantastic way if you uh, are beginning shopping for color and you know the names, etc. this is where you can begin. So in the search function, I am going to type in the first color. Okie dokie. And then I will select view color details. So as you can see on the screen here, this is a soft, beautiful beige with a very slight, and you may not see what I'm seeing when I'm looking at the actual color, but a very slight green undertone that is actually working really well with um, Color Bond June, which tends to have, in some instances, depending on what you put with it, it can actually throw a little bit of pink. So this is sitting with the um, two colors extremely well. Now I'm going to also, I do believe, and this will depend too on whether you wanna go light, dark. There is another color here, which is a little bit lighter, but also works really, really well. And it is called, let me just bring that back. Here we go. Let me see if I can get that up on the screen for you. Here we 
we go. Beautiful. Malamute. Again, what you're seeing on screen here as opposed to, and then you've heard me before when I first started the session talking about, um, you know, digital colour versus um, paint deposited colour, printed colour, etc. So you're seeing a digital representation of the colour on screen and obviously it depends on the um, pixels in the screen. Um, it'll depend on the um, what the computer or the phone, etc., that you're viewing this on as well as to what you're going to see. So this is indicative. Um, I would certainly recommend, as I said earlier, getting yourself a sample pot because that is going to show you how the color really will fit uh, within its environment. And again, it would be um, a least a meter by a meter square of cardboard, three coats of the color that you're trialing, and then move it around um, the outside of the dwelling different times of day and certainly in areas where um, you're not getting a lot of sun, but also in areas where, you know, the dwelling is being drenched with sun. I think that um, you'll really get a, a, a great idea of how the color is going to work within the environment. So that is the biggest tip that I can give you. Um, and there is one more color, but because I'm on screen and I'm trying to find it, it doesn't always go to plan. That's what happens when you're live. Um, I may have to come, oh, actually, let me see if I can get this to work. Ooh. There is another one, which is a, it's slightly, um, that's beautiful. I'm going to get that up and then I will answer some more questions. Uh, where are we? Goodness me. Ah, here we go. Again, it's going to look exactly like what I had before, but it's not. And you can see that it has a little bit more green in this. And you know, this would probably be my pick looking at this against um, the other tones. I think it's just beautiful. And with the um, woodland grey and with the June, it, it actually sings. I think it's, it's actually a really lovely colour scheme. So what I'll do is I will pop that in the, um, into the feed when I finish streaming. I'll pop down the colours that I've shown you so that um, you've got something to refer to, but thanks very much. Okay, I'll come back on screen. Where are we now? So, oh, hi, Rachel. Thank you very much. Yes, I'm sorry. Um, Uploading photos to um, to our live streaming is not possible while I'm on camera. It's all about me. Not really. I'm just being silly. But once I finish streaming, once I'm off the screen, which will be uh, very soon, please upload your photo into the feed and I will certainly answer um, and have a look at your photo, Rachel, and answer any further questions. So, okay, so you, you're saying that... Um, you're repainting your house. Do you have any suggestions for my external colors? I like white, but worried it will be too stark. But looking for much lighter colors. I think I need a contrast from the main house and all the bits at the front around garage, etc. windows and garage door are surf mist. Okay, so you've got surf mist, you're already using surf mist um, and you're wanting to use white. So it depends, like when we're talking about whites, and one of the things to take notice of, and this is a really good tip, so if you're shopping for um, shopping for whites, it's um, it can be quite tricky. And as I showed you within um, the Color Smith app, you know it's a great place to start. But another thing that you can do, and another thing that's really important, is something that's called LRV, which is the light reflectance value. So all colors have an LRV, and you know the easiest way is I think we still have time. Let me just see if I can quickly um, uh, grab something up on the screen for you and then I can show you because you can actually um, find all of this information in Colorsmith. So, okay, I'm going to take you to my iPad very quickly and pop myself in the corner. So, here's something very, very quickly so an LRV light reflectance value so I've just created a color which I just did then called exterior white and um, 
you can see like if you look on the screen and you look down you've got um, an image or you've got wording that says color values with a question mark and then along to the side of that you've got um, RGB which is the red green blue and we've been talking about um, digital color etc tonight so those numbers are certainly apparent to digital color and if I were using something like SketchUp or a program where I'm drawing an interior and I'm wanting to or an exterior I'm wanting to superimpose the color into my um, drawing I would use the RGB codes to do so so that when I view the color it's on my screen but the LRV here it says an LRV of 86 so what I'm going to do is on where it says color values just press, press the question mark and it says this so we've talked about RGBs so I'm not going to go through that but it says LRV so I'll read this out LRV or light reflectance value refers to how light or dark a paint color will look on a scale of 0 which is black and 100 which is white the higher the LRV number is the lighter the color is so back to the um, I'll come back on screen so that's really important so you're shopping for whites you're not sure of how it's going to look outside here's a tip and this is what I work by when I'm looking um, at colors or looking at whites for exteriors I look at the LRV because it gives me an indication of how the color is going to perform uh, when it's under full sun and if I look at colors that are starting at around about 65 to 80 um, I'm generally pretty safe if I go any higher than 80 I do find that it does tend to reflect a lot more and it can become quite glary so that's something to think about you're looking at colors not sure where to begin create a coloring color smith look at the LRV values also where I showed you and I'll just come back to the laptop also where this is the last color that we viewed here so here it says the LRV so the LRV is 62 so this gives you information um, around the colors here as well so you can find your LRV from a couple of touch points as I've showed you tonight I'll come back okay so what I'll do is um, Rachel I'm about to I've gone over time so I'm going to conclude tonight's session and then I will sit behind the computer and certainly um, come up with some beautiful colors for you and answer the rest of the questions that I haven't been able to um, answer so far so again thank you everybody for joining our session tonight I do appreciate you um, popping along to our sessions each and every Thursday night um, certainly if there's anything that you'd like to um, know about or anything that you'd like assistance with or like me to create a session around please do send us a um, direct message I'd be more than happy to create um, some sessions around some feedback or some inspiration from our viewers um, next week we won't be um, in front of the camera I'll actually be at the um, Sydney design show so you can pop on down and see us there um, but we'll be back the week after so again thank you very much for joining our session we do appreciate um, you popping by stay safe everybody and as I always say happy painting thanks <music>